Since my initial experience with a resin printer some months back, many of you suggested for me to check out the Elegu Mars, then Elegu suggested for me to check the front door, and, well, what do you know? Let's get this in here and do something cool. Right to the unboxing, and the nice thing about these desktop resin printers is that there's precious little to unpack. As you can see, this one comes fully assembled, so you basically just lift it out of the box, set it upright, remove some plastic, some protective foam, and there it is, nearly as put together as you'll ever see it. Inside the included toolkit you'll find a plastic scraper, an angle adapter for the build plate, some flush cutters, a metal scraper, a bag of allen keys and backup screws, an allen screwdriver, a couple of masks, an external DC power supply, some funnels, and a measuring cup stuffed with a few pairs of gloves and a USB drive. So, a few things. The power switch is right next to the USB port along the back, there's also a 3.5 inch color touchscreen along the front, and once that is powered up, we'll want to raise the Z-axis up and out of the way so that the resin tank can be removed. The build plate attaches by way of this rotary knob, and once the two fastening screws have been loosened, the spring-loaded ball joint leaves the plate to pivot at will. Now we can lower it onto the LCD screen with a sheet of A4 paper in between to set the gap. And once everything has been tightened back down, we can do a quick test of the UV light and the LCD panel. Looking good, so now let's get that protective film removed, replace the resin tank, and that is everything. This machine is now ready to go, so let's talk about the project. Right away, I wanted to keep this one simple yet reasonably challenging for the printer, something that could be made in several different sizes something practical, but most importantly, something that is relevant to the subject of acoustics, because... So, let's briefly talk about two distinct forms of dynamic tweeters, namely the horn and the dome type. As the name implies, horn tweeters rely on a waveguide to amplify the acoustic energy emanating from the diaphragm, which is good for efficiency and for directivity. Dome tweeters, on the other hand, dissipate energy in all directions for as long as the wavelength of the sound exceeds the diameter of the radiating element. Roughly translated into casual English, think of it as the difference between a spotlight and a floodlight, and today we'll turn one into the other by horn-loading a dome tweeter with a couple of 3D printed waveguide adapters. For this, I'll be using the Audiodynamics 4000 series tweeter, initially because it's a good one, but also because of how it mounts, though we'll come back to that. Right now, let's get these models ready and talk about the slicer. Not only does the Elegoo Mars come with the latest version of Qi 2 box, it also uses the Qi 2 L 5.5 series controller board for native support across the hardware and the software. In other words, whatever we do in a slicer should translate flawlessly over to the printer. And to get things going, Elugo has also furnished me with this bottle of resin. The instructions recommend filling the tank one third of the way, which is about this much, so now let's get this thing going. And since we have about 7 hours before it's done, I thought it might be interesting to slice the model for a conventional filament-fed machine as well, just to weigh out some of the differences. The most immediately apparent of which is the orientation of the print and the amount of support material needed for the overhangs, namely all of this. Once the resin print is finished, there is still a bit of a process to get through, starting with an alcohol bath, followed by some additional UV treatment, and finally removing the supports. So, as you can see in this side-by-side, -side, the benefits of printing in resin are quite apparent. Unfortunately, so are the drawbacks. On one hand, the high resolution of the Elegoo Mars allows for smooth curvature, something that filament-based machines struggle with. But on the other hand, the print quality varies drastically depending on the part of the model we examine, and this becomes more evident once the second model is cured. This is just plain silly. However, before you draw any lasting conclusions about the machine, have a look at this. Right after I printed the second horn, with the leftover resin still in the vat, I launched a third print, this time of a model that Elgo included on a USB drive and the results were substantially different. This is the kind of detail that resin printers are known for and as you can plainly see, the Elgo Mars lives up to that reputation. Though as much as I enjoy chess, I have no practical use for chess pieces. What I'd really like to see is one of my models printed without defect, just like these rooks. Fortunately, Qi 2 Bucks is able to reopen a previously exported slice file complete with all the print session properties, which I took note of and applied to all the subsequent prints. I also took a moment to lubricate the drive screw, re-level the build plate, and clean the resin tank. Finally, on the off chance that there should happen to be something intrinsically problematic about the geometry of the horn, just for fun, I arranged for a one-third scale print of an earlier project rotated 45 degrees on both the X and the Y axis to circumvent shallow angles, which I suspect could be the problem. 
So, following a reprint of the horn, once again with the leftover resin still in the vat, I got the machine started on the tiny transmission line half shells. As was at this point of no great surprise, the reprint didn't come out a whole lot better than the original, and near as I can gather, this is not a problem with the machine, rather a natural limitation of the SLA fabrication process. In other words, even with supports, any upward facing surface that forms a shallow angle with the build plate is likely to deform, and there's really no getting around it with soft curvature along the Z axis. So when I set out to model something reasonably challenging for the printer, well, no kidding. The half shells, on the other hand, should give us a better idea of what the machine is actually capable of when both the geometry and the orientation of the model comports to the nature of how the layers are formed. And I'm eager to see whether or not this could validate the Elugu Mars as a capable resin printer by way of something other than a pre-sliced reference model. In the meantime, however, we still have some acoustics to dabble in, so let's briefly talk about why you might want to horn load a tweeter. And there's a couple of reasons. First, it's a simple way to boost efficiency in places where off-access performance doesn't matter. Maybe you want to fabricate some custom pods, aiming the mids and the highs right at the sweet spot, though with a tweeter, as the smallest of the radiating elements, there's only so much power that you can apply, especially around the resonant frequency before you smoke the voice coil. Well, instead of a flat mounting plate, something like this could possibly make all the difference. Another good reason to horn load is to modify the response acoustically rather than electronically. This horn, for instance, is designed to boost frequencies around 3 kHz, and I designed it with a mounting flange just to illustrate the sheer scope of possibilities, hopefully giving everyone some ideas as to what can be done. This one I designed to completely flatten the response by way of a 10 plus decibel boost around the resonant frequency, something that could never be done electronically without also running a serious risk of damaging the driver at volume. Anyhow, let's gather some real-world data, starting with the tweeter on its own. Followed by the 3 kHz horn. And finishing off with the larger 1.5 kHz horn. As you can see, there is a lot that can be done acoustically long before we ever reach for a DSP. And to drive that point home a little further, let's do a brief sound demo. Here's the Hexibox version 2 for the lows and the mids, and my tweeter contraption for the rest. Here we go. Now then, I should wrap this up talking about the Elgu Mars, and for that, let's get back to our tiny transmission line half shell print. Much to my relief, it turned out great. All the fine detail right down to the screw holes resolved without defect as I had hoped. And while transmission lines do not scale acoustically for the simple fact that the speed of sound remains a constant, still, a miniature print like this leaves me with no shortage of ideas for modeling custom volume knobs, Cherry MX keycaps, headphone cable accessories, etc. These are the kinds of things you may want to print in resin, and the Elegoo Mars can deliver, especially once you've gotten a feel for the strengths and the weaknesses of the SLA fabrication process. That being said, I thank you for watching and hope that you come away with some new project ideas. Don't forget to rate the video as you see fit, subscribe if you haven't already, and maybe check out the Patreon where the brand new Q&A is just about due. Either way, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!